All right, and we're back for another episode of the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. It's Gerald Glassford coming right back at you here from Lakers Fast Break. Pop Culture Cosmos, Inside Sports Fantasy Football, and Game Source, we truly appreciate everyone out there listening to all of our shows. And if you can, please give us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Plus, if you can like, share, subscribe, follow, or do anything that you can to support us right here at the Lakers Fast Break. Pop Culture Cosmos, Inside Sports Fantasy Football and Game Source, it is truly appreciated. I just want to give everybody a heads up. If you're into video games, this weekend, the next few days, is the biggest time of the year for video game fanatics like me and because it, because it is the E3 2021 weekend, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. News coming all over the place. And the best place to go is Pop Culture Cosmos and Game Source on Facebook, We're going to feed you a ton of information there. Plus, also, you can catch our podcast. We're going to be doing special update videos and so much more. So if you're interested in the video game realm, you'll be getting a ton of information there at Pop Culture Cosmos and Game Source on Facebook. Well, we've taken a breath. It's been a week. It's been a little while now since the... Yeah, I guess I I almost had to believe, rub my eyes. I had to rub my eyes because I almost couldn't believe it because the Lakers, unfortunately, did not win their series against Phoenix like we all thought they were going to. And there were reasons why, and which we'll go into today. We're not going to do a whole big thing on what do the Lakers need, what are they going to trade for, speculation, draft, everything down. Those are all episodes coming up in the not-too-distant future. So please go ahead and check those out in the coming days. We're going to have live tapings every Sunday and Thursday. So and we'll have also we'll have episodes for you every Monday and Friday for sure. Plus, I'm going to be dropping extra episodes every now and then on Wednesday. So look for that as well. If you get a chance, hopefully you will have checked out by now the awesome episode 300 where I had Stone Hansen talking the NBA draft and my original first guest, Boomer Perot. He stopped by. I know everybody commented, Boomer, Boomer, Boomer. Great guy. Is a lonely Lakers fan on the East Coast, and he talked about his love for the Lakers and when they won their championship and also the disappointment of this year. So please check out episode 300 earlier this week if you get a chance as well. But I wanted to go ahead and mention it's Father's Day coming up. Please go ahead and give Manscaped.com some love by going ahead and ordering some great things for Dad this Father's Day, and best thing to do for that is go to manscaped.com, go ahead and choose the Lawnmower 4.0 groomer or anything else that you get there, and type in the code one word, all one word, fast break, and you get 20% off plus free shipping right there for you. From the Lakers Fast Break, manscaped.com, and the Hoop Heads Podcast Network, of course, our friends at hoopheadspod.com. Well, guys are here now from lakerholics.com please go ahead and support their awesome page and everything that they do but first up to talk about what's going on with him right now now he's had a week to think about it and he's had a great article that you need to check out which kind of put a kind of put a period on the exclamation point there for the series it's called five things and you can find it at lakerholics.com it is jamie sweet jamie great to have you here so thankful that you are part of today's show. We're going to go into detail uh, a little bit on the NBA playoffs on the back end of the show, but I wanted to get your thoughts now that you've had a chance to breathe in and take in some breaths and just talk about exactly what happened with the Lakers and Phoenix. Well, I think the Lakers met the uh, the better team, uh, quite frankly, uh, and that has been revealed as the playoffs have gone on. Phoenix is uh, – Phoenix is showing up large here in the NBA playoffs, uh, much larger than I think anyone anyone predicted at all. Uh, I think, you know, people thought Devin Booker would do all right and CP3 would do all right. And then that cast of role players, uh, you know, I don't think we anybody expected DeAndre Ayton to be this dominant uh, and to be this much of a force, uh, which is kind of funny considering he was the number one pick in the NBA draft back in 2018. And number one picks... I don't know, tend to have some small amount of impact on basketball games, regardless of their size or the era. Um, Anthony Bennett. Uh, I mean, I, I said traditionally, it's not 100%. Nothing is 100%. <laughs> I threw that. Except, except I'm sorry, for death, that was mean. Death and taxes. That was mean. 
I mean, and Anthony he, Benoit tried really hard. Tra- Anthony Benoit, I know that might have been the first. That that might have been the first. The first. I mean, who knows what you know? He may have been. A, he was you know may have just been a you know. Magic Man had some great uh, posts on the on the site, talking about uh, you know if you were a if you were a, if you were a draft scout sitting in the Timberwolves war room every year, just how you're like oh god please 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 just read my memo, please please oh no we'll go with Ricky Rubio okay yeah remember you know, they, remember they had the, that's well that was the years of Con <laughs> or, oh, yeah, as, no. or as Simmons Bill Simmons would yeah Bill Simmons would say Con yeah he'd be yelling out the Con or write out oh, yeah. type that out there yeah. The only thing I like about Bill Simmons is that joke. The, literally, the only thing is that joke. Um, so, yeah, you know, it, it, the Lakers were beat up. You know, the, they were beat up, downtrodden, disjointed, and it, it was different than the bubble where it was knocking off rust from what was a well-oiled NBA regular season machine that had all the parts in place. Everybody knew what they were supposed to be doing. Nobody questioned what their role was. Nobody had like played a bigger role and then been asked to play a lesser role or was a starter, not a starter. Da, 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 da. Not until the playoffs came and it came down to adjustments. So I think that was the big difference this year. There was a whole, you know, a whole lack of continuity and, and cohesion that this team couldn't overcome in an NBA series against a good team. And the Suns are a great team. They're the second best team in the Western Conference. You know, we can't just like gloss over the regular season in the playoffs every year as if it was like, you know, just like the warm up, you know, watching a pitcher warm up, throw into the catcher before the first inning starts. Like, it's not like that. It's not, it's not that dismissive. So, or dismissible, I should say. So, you know, I, I'm tipping my hat to the Suns. Uh, They're showing they're for real by the way they're playing here in the second round. uh, And they're, Playing great. So if it's never, I feel, if you're going to lose to somebody, it's always best to lose to who ends up being the champion because then you at least feel like you lost to the best. Uh, that's my that's my take on what happened to the Lakers this year in a nutshell. There's a lot more stuff you can read about on the website, as you're saying, Gerald. Uh, a couple of articles and Tom has an article and Magic Man has been on fire lately on the blog, which I, I very much appreciate. He's been bringing the heat, baby. Saying Tom has an article is like saying there's only one flea on the dog. That's all I'll say. But well, it's, been a dr- am- it's been a desert this week. It's been a desert. Uh, well, he was on the road. I know he was on the road. Uh, he's, yeah, he's, he pulling have- a wi- he's a Willie Loman right now. I, yeah. I get it. He's, he's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say no, right, a joke. A that joke. I know it's a joke. Yes, I know. But I, I'm going to say right now, yes, yeah, it's a joke. It's a joke. It's a joke. But everybody out there, please, it's a joke. But I will say that I disagree with you. I think Phoenix is a great team. Phoenix is one of the best teams still left out there. But the Lakers, with a gimpy LeBron and an even gimpier AD, with a dysfunctional team that it seems like a lot of mismatched parts, which you and I thought less of going into the season than Tom or – everybody who bought into all those pundits out there that thought this was the greatest team ever conceived or they're so far ahead of everybody else, yada, yada, yada. Felix, great to have you here. V, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate so much the conversation and you being a part of it. I want to mention that everybody out there that I think that the Lakers had LeBron and AD been healthy. If you push them to six games and AD is not even there for part of it, and LeBron is really not a hundred percent or close to it for most for all of it. None. I really think they would have taken the series, and I think oh, it's yeah. a question. Even that, with all the all the things aside that you mentioned, which were right on point with the Lakers yeah. and all the problems that they have, and the fact that Phoenix is so good, I still think that the Lakers would have came out on top. Agreed. Agreed. So there you go. See, he, we agree. We agree. <laughs> we agree. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. But then again. Laker Tom would say somewhere that, you know, the glass is hemp at, at this point. It's but, Andre Drummond's fault. Yes, yes. All <laughs> Andre Drummond. Well, that's just one of the things that's out there. That, that it's, wrong, top of, it's top of the list, though. Yeah, v fault. Garcia yeah. says number six is coming back with a vengeance next season. Well, yes, uh, he ha- LeBron has decided to go ahead and take up the number six jersey. Is that a uh, sign I, that his playing days are coming closer and closer to an end? You never know. You never know. I mean, he's still got three years left on the contract, so we'll see what happens. But then again, the key is left under the door for him in Miami, according to Pat Riley. But we won't go there. But also here today to talk about 
what went wrong in the series now that we've had a chance to look at it is a good man indeed. He has been, like Jamie Sweet says, he's been on fire at Lakerholics.com. And I know he's gotten a lot of great responses from it. It is Sean Grice, a.k.a. Magic Man. Magic Man, I've got one eye on you, one eye on the Golden Knights. So I'm really into this hockey thing, just letting you know. You were in the, into this hockey thing in Toronto for altogether different reasons, for your own safety and livelihood last week. But I'm into it because we could be celebrating. Well, then again, we're Montreal's had like a week and a half, seemingly, to go ahead and rest up. So we've gone through that before this round. So we'll see what happens there. But I want to hear your thoughts, man. We've had a week to digest the Lakers' loss to Phoenix. You've heard my thoughts. You've heard Jamie's thoughts. Now I want to hear your thoughts on exactly what went wrong and you know just basically why did the lakers lose this series yeah you know what gerald um jamie touched on uh an issue i'd like to bring up um before the season started if uh, anybody wants to go back they can find the receipts <laughs> this very group had a very hard time just hand ringing Tom to basically admit that Devin Booker was a top 15 player. I mean, he refused to even acknowledge we had, that. I remember that argument. And now I, I put the question to him. I put top, this, top 15. This, I put top 15. Yes, put top, yes. Closing in on top 10. Top right. And, and I, would, I, would, I would say this, Gerald. If CP3 and, and Book close the deal, and I think it's going to be really difficult for Denver to win win four out of four out of five here, um, then I'd have to put Devin Booker in the top ten player category. I mean, this is a story of yes, we were hobbled, no doubt it, but this is also about the ascension of Devin Booker. Um, his game's taken on a whole new element. Um, I mean, God bless Kobe. He he wrote the legendary, and he's turning out to be. He's he's turned out to be. He scored seventy points <laughs> against our hated Boston Celtics, which I love personally Me for too. him. <laughs> for Predators. And, yeah, uh, and oh, uh, oh, uh, their best defender was missing that night. Who cares? I don't want to hear about it. I don't no. want to hear about it. So, I mean, that's true, too. Um, but Book is just taking his game to a new level. He can get to the cup. Um, he's very analytical about his mid-range shot, when he wants to take it, when he thinks his three-pointer is falling. And, I mean, he's just showing that the Denver Nugget, uh, we're going to talk about that later, but uh, there's an element that he brings to the game that if you can't match, it's very difficult to beat this Phoenix team. You have to have guard play at a level that's, that's maybe not near him, but close to him. Because with the combination of him and CT3, it's just very difficult to outplay that group. Well, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Uh, yeah, If Phoenix has an easy time of it because they're already up two nothing in the series against Denver and they have, and they go all the way to the finals. It's going to be interesting to see that if the Lakers and the test that they provided to him is the toughest going forward, i have a feeling it's going to be one of the tougher series that they will face in this, in this NBA playoffs. I don't know if they're going to go all the way. I think Brooklyn, if James Harden comes back healthy is got to be the favorite but I think Phoenix can definitely get to the finals now that they've cleared their way off to their biggest hurdle. And it's not Denver and it's not Utah and it's not the Clippers. The biggest hurdle was the Lakers. Uh, I think people need to just check themselves because the Lakers, I know we're homers here, but the Lakers, had they been healthy, would have won that series. I think people need to get a clue on that and people need to be realistic that the Lakers, you know, when AD went down, it, I mean, it just – you saw the domination in that game three and then even at a game two, you saw the periods where they were just dominating Phoenix and Phoenix had no answer. And as soon as AD started to go gimping, once again, it, it turned South the whole series from there. 
And LeBron, you can see, is not 100%. Thanks, Solomon Hill, for you know everything you did. But it, Le, LeBron's injury, you could tell, was just not – he's not the same. He's not the same right now, and hopefully a summer off will help him. But, yes, uh, we're going to go ahead and say, you know what, it, re, looking at it, I think Phoenix, you got to give them the credit. You know, Chris Paul, who is obviously a lot healthier now, interesting enough, you know, a week later, his shoulder looks much better playing against Denver, uh, seemingly enough. So I will say that he, right now he's playing really well and lifting that team. Booker is really playing good, but, he, you know, he was really great against the Lakers. He was at a top level for most of the series, and the Lakers were still having their way while they were healthy. The problem is that they weren't healthy and they didn't finish out. But Booker, he's been playing okay. It's been Chris Paul that's been dominating this series right now against Denver. And let's get into that before we head on out. Is the NBA playoffs? We'll start right there. I know you had a rant in mind, Mr. Magic Man, so I will start with you first. Because Michael, don't call me Mike Malone, was at the podium last night, and a lot of people were wowed by what he said when he said that the Denver – Nuggets quit in the second half of their game in game two against Phoenix, which Phoenix won going away. So I want to hear your thoughts. You said you had a rant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure All right. Uh, so we'll hear your rant, my friend, on Michael. Don't call him Mike, even though it sounds better. But don't be like Cassie Hubbard and say, Mike, so it's <laughs> Michael Malone. All right. We'll hear you. What What's on your mind? Because I think he called out the team for what it did. I think they, they – I mean, even though some of the players said they didn't quit last night, it sure seemed like they took their foot off the gas and they just let Phoenix just control that second half. Yeah. You know what, Gerald? Um, were you watching that live? Did you happen to see that press conference live? No, I got the, I got the highlights later on. Once I once they went out oh, on okay. social media, exactly what right. Michael Malone said. <laughs> I I happened to be uh, eating dinner at work, and uh, I was also drinking uh, uh, a pop, and uh, I almost spit out my beer, Gerald, when I I heard him say they quit. I I, I, I couldn't believe what I heard. Actually, I I mean you're right, but. It reminded me of that Dr. John song. I'm not sure if anyone's familiar with it. The right place, the wrong time. Um, when you're dealing, and, and I have to stress this because I'm a millennial and I work with other millennials and most Gen Zers now at uh, the fire station and the, um, the MT uh, house. You can't talk to these guys like this. Puppy. The, the right place to do that would have been in the locker room. If, if you need to blow off some steam and let them know what you really think, the locker room is the right place. Going to the media, especially with how, I'm not going to use the word sensitive because that's not right, or soft because, again, these, these are just stupid buzz paradigm words that dumb people use to try to explain you know how other people are feeling um you know it's just a generational thing you 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 can't you can't scold these these young men publicly and expect them like it'd be like you know if if we went to fight a fire and it was a shake and bake and and we get back and you know the place is gone but but we got everybody out okay and the captain comes in and says you know what guys you really blew that one you know we should have seen building. Everything should have been done this way. You know, instead of, you know, we're exhausted. We did our best. You know, just just let us blow off some steam. And if you need to let us know what, you know how you feel, do it privately. Don't do it in front of everybody. You, you know, making a spectacle of that, I think, is the beginning of the end of Michael Malone. I don't think he'll get fired for this. But it's going to stick I with the, the Nuggets for a while. He's going to yeah. stick with that yeah. team for a I while. Think, I think he's going to definitely get a reprieve next year because Jamal Murray's probably not coming back. And even if he does, I, I mean, they're, they're still not a contender. They, they, I think they still have to wait till 20, the 2020, 2023 season. I don't know. Because they, 
they did the Gordon trade. And you got to remember, they got a huge boost from that Gordon trade. Not necessarily Gordon mm -hmm. per se, but that team meshed really well. And they were off to, I think it were like, they were seven or eight games undefeated. And they really had this like gaudy number four and against yeah, plus minus. Yeah, yeah. And they were really good as a starting lineup. They didn't have the bench. I don't think that could really do very, you know, they would have to work on that obviously. But I think that I would not discount them as a contender if they were fully healthy. I really don't think you should. I, no, no. I mean, I, like I said, I, I, I don't think they're a contender next year, but I think that core, you're right, Gerald, definitely moving forward. They, they, they do have potential. I just don't think that Mo Malone is also the right coach for those guys. This team reminds me very similarly – to the early 90s Hawks, where you had a very dynamic guard and you had a very dynamic big. Now, now the roles are kind of reversed. Uh, the Joker is more of the leader on the Nuggets, I would say, than Jamal Murray. Although, of the two players in, in a game, Jamal Murray can be the more explosive scorer, which, which gives him and that offense, uh, you know, a versatility that can, honestly, Gerald, if Jamal Murray is healthy, Denver could match us. I mean, they're a different beast than, say, Phoenix would be. If the Lakers played Denver head-to-head -head and Jamal Murray was healthy, LeBron was healthy, I would say that'd be a seven-game series, personally. Because, like I said, Murray just has a different element to that team that they would miss, and they are missing. It's just his ability to go one-on-one -on -one in any situation. He can go north to south east to west, to do a side pick and roll, he can score in ISO. Um, it's just a versatility that he brings that Denver can't replace. I'll tell you what, there's still more great series that are out there. I want to hit you up, guys, on, the, on this. Utah has taken an early one to nothing series lead on the Clippers, and their second game will be played later tonight, uh, later tonight as we're recording this. I want to hear your thoughts on this. I think that the Clippers, and I said it between, we, we all did like a kind of secret you know, email thing between each other on our picks. And I thought if the Clippers were going to be Dallas and end up taking those last two games, that they would end up, that they would end up taking this series. So Jamie, I want to hear your thoughts on the series. It's one, nothing, but I was surprised at how close that first game was. And I thought Kawhi should have taken that last shot. Uh, he gave it up really too easily. And your star player is not supposed to really do that, but you know, it, it happened. And I'm just, I just thought it was a lot closer than I thought. Cause I thought they would be tired going into it. And this is a game that I think the coming up in game two, that the Clippers can take. And I think that they've got this series. I really think that they will take this series in seven. I want to hear your thoughts on the Clippers and Utah as we go into game two in Utah. I mean, I think it's going to be – I'm not I, rooting I, for the Clippers, by the way. I just want to make mention. I'm, not, I'm just th – do tell me who I think know, is going to win. I just think that the Clippers will go ahead and beat Utah. I just think that they have more stars to lean on. The, Utah's got Mitchell – Whereas you've got playoff P, he will give you one game in this series where he's playoff P and six others where he's not. Maybe then And maybe two. And then you've got Kawhi that's really going to do a number for you. I thought actually uh, Utah did a great job keeping Kawhi under wraps in that game one. Um, he didn't have uh, – because he had been shooting lights out, like yeah. a ridiculous percentage coming into that series. And then he shot – I mean – it's like, like right at 50% as opposed to like 65, 70%, which is what he had been yeah. shooting at. And that you can absorb from Kawhi Leonard. Uh, if you hold the rest of the team down, if you don't let uh, Reggie Jackson go off for 20, if you don't let yeah. Morris go off for 15, 20, if you don't let Paul George go off for 30 as well, you know, or even if you do let Paul George, I remember when I got a lot of flack for saying Reggie Jackson, when he was waived, uh, should have gone on the Lakers. Hmm. I, Listen, you and I were saw eye to eye on Reggie Jackson and Norman Powell yeah. for minute one. Like both of those would have been fantastic. And Christian Canada. Wood. I mean, that was never going to happen for us. I mean, that was never going to happen for us. Well, I, I that could have happened in early January of 2020 when I called out a trade. Yeah, and I made no, a but, trade uh, while uh, it was still a backup. That's way too hindsight. That's way too. I mean, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying that I know. I know. 2020, baby. 2020. Um, 
But uh, I, I think this is going to go seven games. Honestly, I kind of feel like this series hinges on whose bench shows up every night. Um, yeah, I agree. If Jordan Clarkson, who was only six for 18, but was like six for nine on three pointers in that game, uh, or six for 12, he hit, he hit a pretty He's decent very clip from the outside from three, uh, can keep that kind of pressure on the Clipper defense off the bench. And if Gobert can just be exactly what he was, he doesn't need to have five blocks. He just needs to be that presence that keeps Kawhi Leonard from getting all the way to the paint and wanting to shoot. Kawhi loves those little elbow jumpers on the corners. He loves to play horse throughout the course of a game, right? He has those eight spots kind of all around, the, and it just hits those spots, and they're, they're, they're money shots for him. They're not always threes, but they're money shots, and they keep the, the Clippers moving in a positive direction, um, which is the thing that drives me mad about the modern game. It's like, oh, the mid-range shot is, such, is gone. It's like it's not in the playoffs. You see mid-range sh shots all the time in the playoffs, and they are momentum-swinging shots or momentum-killing shots if the other team's going on a run and you hit like a little 8-foot, 12-foot jumper, you know, over a big man. Um, you know, I, uh, I, I to your point about not rooting for the Clippers, I, I am not a Clipper fan. I was more of a Clipper fan when they were down in San Diego and like the Chargers when they came north. I asked why. Why did you leave? You had a whole city. You had a whole city all to yourself. And then you come coattail riding up north. What what What's that all about? Go back. Go back. Go back south. Go back to your fans. There's none of none here except Clipper Dale, and he doesn't care. He'd probably move to San Diego. But I will always, from the minute he gave his post draft press conference, always, always, always root my heart out for one Ivitsia Zubats, who I think is a great player and not not great, but you know, a fun player, I should say. Should have been and a player that, that we would have kept, and one that we ought not have given away for nothing. Uh, like many players of that era. I remember that. I was like, also mad on that trade, too. I was so mad on that trade. It was like a throwaway. It was like, let's just throw a player away. Which player should it be? This guy's promising. Let's get rid of this guy. Yeah. Uh, I hated that. That whole era. I was like, these are poor Muscala. choices. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's all you got to say. You know, you, you, listen, if you have a moose or if you have Chewbacca, Zublaka. You're going with the Wookiee. Like, you go Wookiee every time. You don't go Moose. Come on. Come on. Everybody knows this. Uh, you know, you don't make a Wookiee angry. Anyhow, point being, uh, you know, I, I think it's going to go seven, and I actually think it's going to be Utah just because I don't think – I don't think Paul George has it in him. I just don't think he does. He always has all this stuff. He's one of those guys that's like LeBron, right? Until he pushes through – there's going to be that stigma of you can't. Or and especially you when a crowd is chanting playoff P mockingly at him. Right. But, I mean, you know, LeBron had some – LeBron had some – when he first got to Miami, he, he took some heat, right? And then he was able to push through eventually. Year two took a year. But he was able to push through and win that first chip. And then the narrative changed, right? Suddenly he's in the – you know, oh, now this guy's a winner, right? And that's – I, you know, that's what I kind of feel like has happened to Paul George. Um, you know, his narrative has gotten away from him, not of his own fault. You know, not, he hasn't done a lot to help his narrative with some of the ridiculous things he says, like, well, the coach is why we didn't win last year. Like, bro, I'm pretty sure Doc Rivers didn't play one minute on the floor. Uh, and maybe he made some poor choices, but come on, don't go blaming the coach for your, your playoff failures. Um, so I, I think it's going to be Utah. Uh, I think it's going to be Phoenix over Denver. I don't see Denver coming back. Uh, those are how I see the Western games going down. Um, and it's a new era, right? This 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 NBA playoffs has been a fantastic showcase of young, new talent that I think the league is thrilled about. Uh, I don't know that it will help ratings this season, but I think in the future it will be good for us to see, you know, like, the one thing that I kind of wish would have happened and won't, but wouldn't have never happened and certainly won't now, I really wanted to see Luca versus Trey to like have that trade play out that draft day trade where the, the Maverick, you know, where somehow, you know, which is really the number one draft pick of the draft. You know what I mean? Like I would have loved to have seen that play out on the court in an NBA finals environment. Uh, Luca versus Trey, you know, the two most hyped players of their generation right now, certainly two of the best players of their generation uh, you know, of this new crop of, you know, under 23 uh, NBA stars coming out. So that won't happen, though, because Luca's already out. And I don't, uh, you know, uh, even though I still think, 
I, I still think Milwaukee's got something in that uh, in that. Uh, I know they're down 2-0, but I, well, I, I can't. I, I have a hard time seeing that defense not rising to the challenge at some point, but maybe it won't. I don't know. Well, let's talk about that now. That is the series going on that's in game three, and right now it's a back and forth with Milwaukee and the Nets, and Milwaukee is leading by four right now in the fourth quarter, but it's been back and forth with both those teams. If the Nets get it, and they pull out the win. That's going to put them up a commanding three to nothing lead. But okay. again, we'll wait and see what happens with that one. And we'll give you one more update on that game before we head on out. But we've got just a few minutes left. And I do want to give everybody an update on Alex Caruso because I know he's been a major part of the chat going on right now. And he is at the Golden Knights game in Las Vegas as they're leading two to one right now over Colorado. Just wanted to give everybody an update on that. So he is at least spending his time somewhat wisely. <laughs> but, Sean, before we head on out, your thoughts quickly on the Brooklyn Nets series, and then let's transition over quickly to the series that's tied as they head to Atlanta, Atlanta and Philadelphia, one-to-one. -one. Yeah, Gerald, that's, um, I think that series will go back and forth. You know, it's a best of five now. I think we'll split the next two. I think it'll end up being a best of three, and we'll see what happens there. Um, you know, everyone, but look, I was, I try not to be a fanboy of players because I'm a Lakers fan. However, there, there's just some guys you just, you take a liking to immediately. And two of those guys for me were Bam Adebayo and Devin Booker, and I'm both glad to see that both of them take in huge steps in their careers. The other guy for me is Trey Young. He is electric out there as an offensive player. And I don't care about his defensive liabilities at this point. You can you can find ways to hide him on pick and rolls or find ways to hide him um, in a zone and, but because he is just electric out there. Um, in the playoffs, he's He's accounting for about 70% of their offense. He's scoring or assisting on 70% of their points. It's, it's an incredible output, what he's doing. Um, you know, he was touted, Gerald, I remember hearing that he was touted as, a, as this explosive scorer, and he, had, he could shoot from the half court. And I don't think scouts really gave him his due as a playmaker. He is a true facilitator that doesn't need help. He reminds me so much of uh, a Kobe Bryant and an Allen Iverson. He's a facilitator that doesn't need help. He can find offense for himself and he can create for others and he can't do anything to stop either one. He only hope to contain it, not to stop. I'll tell you what, it's going to be interesting to see how the rest of the series plays out. I am excited. You know, Dwight Howard hasn't even thrown anybody around yet or been ejected. So that's something that we still wait to see. But Joel Embiid's knee, I think the future of Philadelphia is going to be very dependent on his knee and how well he can go each and every game. Uh, yes, Felix, I am in Vegas. I want to tell you right now, and we're very excited. I wanted to get a ticket to tonight's game, but that's very hard to do so right now because it is the biggest ticket in town and it is a full capacity. In fact, it's the largest crowd of a basketball or hockey game that sure. they had recently here in Vegas uh, since the pandemic uh, you know, has, has started. So really proud about that. And right now they're leading. But Magic Man, I agree with you. I think Philadelphia is eventually going to get over it. And it's just going to be tough, though, with Embiid and his torn meniscus, how well he can go on it. DeAndre Hunter is out for the season. He's been hurt all year, and he finally got uh, another injury. That's, a, I think, it also a meniscus injury. He got that. That's a big blow to Atlanta on someone who can be a 3 and D player that they need. Yeah. I think it's a nice story in Atlanta, but I think it's not going to be nice enough. And we'll wait and see what happens with the matchup between Milwaukee and Brooklyn. But if Brooklyn gets this game tonight, and right now it's tied as I speak about this, then it could be all she wrote for for Milwaukee as well. I agree. Jim. Yeah, That's I mean, when when you look at 
at this series, it's just a matter of, of a great a great offense versus you know a totally great defense, and it, it it's like uh, Coach Van Gundy always says: great defense is never going to be great offense. That's just the way this game works, and um, you know, Gerald, we'll see what happens with James Harden, how healthy he can come back from from the hamstring um, soft tissue injury. Uh, but Kevin Durant's playing at a level he played at um, two years before he had his injury, and mm-hmm. he was being touted as the best in the NBA at that point. Um, he can score at will now. Um, I don't think there is anybody left in the association that can beat this team in a seven-game series. They're just, they have too much offense. I don't care how good your defense is. Their offense is going to find a way to beat you four out of seven times. Yeah. And um, like like you said, if Milwaukee drops this game, it's all she wrote. It's all she wrote. It is. It very well could be all she wrote indeed. But we'll keep you updated right here at the, Lake, at the Lakers Fast Break on what's going on with the NBA playoffs. We're going to be taping another episode Sunday night, or actually late Sunday afternoon. We're going to try Sunday afternoon here on Pacific, on the West Coast. And we're going to be talking about should they run it back? We're going to just have one simple question out there we're going to touch on. And that's going to take a long time to answer because <laughs> there's been talk about running it back. The team has talked about in their exit during reviews about running it back. Should the Lakers run it back? That's something we're going to talk about that's going to drop an audio podcast outlets everywhere and the Who Pets Podcast Network. That's going to drop on Monday show. But if you want to go ahead and check out what we do, we we'll tape it on Sunday afternoon. So hopefully we'll see you there. Felix, V, and everybody else, Albert, you've been outstanding. You're always welcome to join us here on the show. You can always pop on to the show live with us if you ever want to. And you can do that. Just give me a heads up at LakersFastBreak at Yahoo.com. Or if you have any questions, comments for the show, you're always welcome to. I need interviews out there over the course of the next few months. So if you want to go ahead and hit me up on a one-on-one or join us with the Lakerholics, please go ahead and just hit us up, LakersFastBreak at Yahoo.com. Jamie Sweet, five things articles which are available and you should read. It's a must-read at Lakerholics.com. Sean Grice, our basketball historian. you got to read everything that he does at Lakerholics.com. Since Laker Tom is not here, you got to go ahead and check out his stuff too. But check it out after Jamie's and Sean stuff. After check after. it out now after the same time. It's all good stuff. It's all good yeah, stuff. You read their stuff and then you read Laker Tom stuff. I go, I'm glad he's taking some time to recalibrate his positive vibe. It was it, it really had gone fairly fairly cantankerous and uh, pretty much since the playoffs started, he was not a happy camper. So, uh, I mean, with reason, we've been banged up and you know it's not wasn't a fun wasn't a fun team to watch. So. Felix is uh, going to tell – Felix is saying he's going to tell Lakers Tom. You know what? At Lakers Tom on Twitter, go ahead and tell him go that we talk some him. smack. Yeah, go, go ahead and tell him we talk some smack. I talk I, – I, I, it doesn't matter if he's here or not. He knows how I feel. He knows, he knows all of our phone yeah, numbers, right. Felix. We talk, to, we, we talk smack to him on emails. Like he's like, He'll just like, do it anyways. He knows my Twitter. He'll just message me at Lakers right. Fast Break on Twitter. So there's no escaping Laker Tom, whether we like it or not. You know how we can guarantee Thomas here on Sunday if we all agree that the Lakers should run it back and then he'll come, whoa, whoa, no, we shouldn't run it back. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's very true indeed. But on, Sean, on, on a, on a happier, on a happier yeah. note, on a happy note, I'm, I'm ha- on behalf of Canada, we're happy for the Golden Knights. It, it's great for the NHL. It's great for the game. I will say Gerald was shaking in his boots a little bit when we're down 2-0. But this is playoff hockey, and Vegas has a, a really great playoff team. They were built for a situation like this, and um, I'm just looking for the Golden Knights. Well, I mean, it's going to become to the point if Seattle does get its own franchise or if the NBA does bring in expansion franchises and the NHL is going to bring in the Seattle Kraken, they need to look at the Golden Knights. Not saying this, yes, I am here in Vegas, but they need to look at Golden Knights on how – you start an expansion franchise because what all, they've touched on all the things. They have been a playoff team from the get-go, which has never been heard of before. 
in expansion on any of the major sports. So that's that's the thing I take from the Golden Knights. Also, the fact that we in Vegas have rallied around them after we initially shunned them. So, you know, it's been a great story. I've got a whole ton of stuff I could say on the Golden Knights as far as it's concerned, but that's for another day and another time. But Felix, so great to have you here. He says go Sharks. Well, that's our mortal enemy, enemy of the Vegas Golden Knights. I can't say that, but... Real Felix quick on hockey. Real quick on hockey. Is there yeah. a better name than the Seattle Kraken? I say no. That no, I don't awesome. think there is. But that's it yeah, that's awesome. better than Golden Knights. It's better than right. all the other. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's that's cool. <laughs> I, I I love I'd love to see the in-game videos for them when they, when they come up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, the Kraken just swallowing up the logo, whoever they're facing off against. That's gonna look really cool. But I'll tell you what, it's been great talking to Jamie. Great talking as well, Sean, aka Magic Man. If you got any questions for them specifically, hit them up Anytime. at the best place to go if you're a Lakers fan, and that is Lakerholics.com. You cannot say I don't plug the place enough. No. You cannot say I can't. You cannot say I don't plug the site enough. It is Lakerholics.com. Also, as well, Father's Day is coming around the corner. Manscape.com. Just type this one word: fast break, all one word, twenty percent off plus free shipping. Doesn't get any better than that. Shout out to Bongo. There you go. But guys, <laughs> hopefully we'll have the awesome El Rob and Laker Tom back with us on Sunday when we tape it. But you'll be able to hear everything that's going on if you're listening on our podcast outlets coming up on Monday. We'll just answer one question. Should the Lakers run it back? That in itself is going to take up an hour right here next week <laughs> at the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. Happy Father's Day to you as well, Felix V. And thank you so much, everyone, for watching and listening. Al um, Albert, great shout-out to you as well. Thanks so much, everyone.